Hello everyone, my name is Malvika and today I'm going to discuss with you one of the most important PTEs question that is called Summarize Spoken Text. Let's have an introduction of this task. This is one of the long answer writing type question which comes in listening section and it requires you to use your listening as well as your writing skills. Then you are required to understand analyze and combine information from a recording which can be either an interview, a speech or a lecture. Then you need to summarize all the key points from the recording and you need to write a summary. It can be at least three to four sentences long. Then to do this entire task you are given 10 minutes. This may seem like a long time to many people, but you need to stay focused and you need to keep an eye on the timer. It is located on the top right hand corner of the screen when you take the test. So this is how the screen will look like during your exam. It has cut copy paste button as well as a audio progress indicator, uh, which will show you the progress of the audio recording. So what does the PT software requires from you? What do you need to do in this task? So there are several sub skills which are tested in this item type. Here you are required to identify the theme, topic or main ideas. Then you need to summarize the main idea. You need to identify what are the supporting details, what are the examples mentioned by the speaker, and you have to simultaneously identify the speaker's purpose, style, tone, or attitude. You have to understand academic vocabulary, and you need to infer the meaning of unfamiliar words. You are also required to categorize and classify the information, and you have to comprehend with variations in tone, speech, and accent. This is the reason why some recordings are a bit faster and some recordings have a lower speech rate. So what are you required to do? You have to write a summary, writing under timed conditions, that is 10 minutes. And you have to take notes while listening to a recording. You have to communicate the main points of the, uh, of the lecture in your writing. And then you have to organize the sentences and paragraphs in a logical way. Apart from this, you have to use correct grammar, correct spellings, correct mechanics, and you have to use words and phrases which are appropriately fitting to the context. All right, so let's have a look on the scoring criteria. This item type, it is going to give you marks for listening as well as writing section. There are five parameters which are checked in this question. So first is content. If your summary is mentioning all of the relevant aspects, that it is covering all of the important points, then you are going to get two marks. If your summary is good, but uh, if it is lacking any one or two aspects, then you're going to get one mark. If it is entirely misrepresenting the main aspect or omitting the main idea or theme of the passage, then you are going to get zero. Another uh, important parameter is form. So you have to write your summary in 50 to 70 words. If you have uh, written a summary which is approximately 50 to 70 words long, then you're going to get two marks. And if you uh, have written a summary which is uh, containing at least 49 words or 71 words, then you're going to get one mark only. If it is lower than that or uh, more than that, then you're going to get zero mark. If you write your summary uh, in capital letters, then you're also going to get zero. If you are not using any punctuation marks, if you're not uh, including any uh, you know, paragraph, or if you're including very short sentences or bullet points, then you're going to get zero. Then uh, another parameter here is grammar. If you are using appropriate grammatical structure and it is correct, then you're going to get two marks. If there are some errors, but it is not hindering the way of communication, then it is going to get you one mark. 
but if it is entirely defective grammatical structure and it is not able to convey the communication or the message easily, then you're going to get zero. Next parameter is vocabulary. So if you are using appropriate choice of words, if you are using appropriate uh, words like uh, you are using formal words, if you are using synonyms which are precisely uh, conveying the same meaning, then you are going to get two marks. If they are having some error, a little bit small errors, then you are going to get one mark. But if it is entirely defective word choice, which is not communicating the exact meaning, then you are going to get zero. The last uh, thing that you need to consider is your spellings. If your spellings are all correct, then you're going to get two marks. If it is having one mistake in spelling, then you're going to get one mark. But if it's more than that, then you're going to get zero. So let's talk about the strategy. This strategy is divided into three stages. The first step is to take notes. It is one of the most important skill that you will require to crack this question type. So what kind of information do you need to note down? You have to basically write down as much information as you can from the lecture. Okay, take down any new, uh, new terms, any definitions, any facts or statistics. You should also pay particular attention to the words and phrases in the lecture, which are indicating the structure of the spoken text. It could be like this study features a series of whatever it is, then first, then next, like this. Then we have highlight uh, words which are in, in indicating some importance, like most significantly, importantly, then there are words which are indicating some contrasting details like but, however. Then whenever uh, any information comes after this uh, words, then it is the most important information that could be playing a huge role in your content. So there are a few uh, words or phrases which are used by the speakers uh, to give examples or supporting details. Like for example, for instance, it is also important that you organize your notes in order of importance. You have to write down the main idea. It should be followed by the supporting ideas, supporting examples, and other details. You have to also keep a little bit space in your notes while taking it down, right? Because sometimes what happens is speaker, they may also return back and discuss the same points that they have mentioned earlier. So this is why it is important. You should not write your, uh, you know, note in notes. You should not write in complete sentences. Instead, you should use keywords or use your own abbreviated form and li leave out all of the unimportant details. So the second step for you is to formulate your answer. Now. After your recording has ended, you have taken down all of the notes. Now, uh, what you need to do is think about three important things. What was the topic, uh, the topic of the lecture? What was the main idea? Then what were the supporting details or examples that were given by the speaker? And what did he conclude? So basically, here you are not required to repeat all of the information that you have noted down. You have to shorten, simplify, paraphrase, and synthesize the information in 50 to 70 words only. You have to start your uh, writing your summary with a topic sentence, which will introduce the main idea. And also, it will be followed by two to three sentences, which will consist of supporting points or examples. You do not have to include all of the examples from the recording. You can shorten some or even leave out the unimportant details. It is also important that you paraphrase the information using your own words or sentence structures. You can do this by changing word forms using synonyms, or you can change the gramma grammatical structure or end word order. 
So uh, basically, when writing a summary, you should include all of the key information and also if there is any contrasting detail or conflicting points of view, then you have to mention it in your summary. You have to use linking words, adverbs, or sentence, pa sentence patterns which are indicating contrast or opposite points. So basically, when you are formulating your answer, you need to think and look at your notes and uh, think about that what is the topic sentence that will introduce the summary. What were the main idea? What were the supporting details, points or examples? And what was the conclusion? So here you can use templates to formulate your answer. This is one of the templates that I use. Um, and you can make changes to this template as per your requirement as it is flexible. So uh, step three, after you have formulated your answer, it is important that you check your answer for mistakes. So at least take out two minutes to check your mistakes. What, now what type of errors can you look for in your summary? You have to look for grammatical errors as well as mechanical errors. Grammatical errors, they can include any incomplete sentence, any tense error, subject verb agreement error, pronoun, uh, pronoun agreement error, single and plural forms, and ver word forms. Mechanical errors, they can include any misspelled words, wrong punctuation, and capitalization. So let's start with one practice question. Sound receptors. You've got sound receptors in your ear, and they're beautiful. We're not going to talk about them at any length, but there's there's little flappy these these little um, uh, spiky things going along in your ear, and they can translate vibrational energy coming from your ear, you're hitting your eardrum, being translated into a vibration in the fluid in your ear, into a physical motion of of these. Uh, little receptors there into an electrical motion, into an electrical signal that goes into your ear. So all of that, all that's pretty impressive stuff. We're not going to talk about the details of it, but I invite some of you who want to learn more about this, uh, particularly you know, MIT students, I think, find receptors to be really quite remarkable kinds of devices. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video and use your nine minutes time to formulate an answer. After nine minutes are over, you can again play the video and check for the important points that I have noted down and my answer. Okay. So what are the key points that I noted down from the lecture? I noted down sound receptors, human ears, tiny, flappy, spiky, function, vibrational energy, physical motion, into electrical signal, into the ear. Then the last thing that I mentioned is remarkable device. So I have used all of these important key points and formulated my answer, which looks something like this. Okay. So this is all for today. I hope you learned a lot. All right, so please comment, like, and sub subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more videos 